I can trace my journey to becoming a designer back to one single moment. That moment happened on the 19th of March, 1969, when I was walking with my father, hand in hand, along the boulevard Rue Mohammed V in Casablanca, Morocco, when an object stopped me in my tracks and it changed the way I viewed the world forever. And that object is none less than the Jaguar E-Type Series 1 fixed head coupe. The duality of the mathematical precision and the artistic elegance of this magnificent machine truly blew away the nine-year-old me. My father had to drag me away kicking and screaming, even crying, and I really think that it changed my life forever from that point on. And that's why this car has a special place in my heart, and that's why it's in my dream garage. Hi, welcome back to my channel and especially welcome to my new series that I've decided to call My Dream Garage. Now these are 12 of my most favorite designs ever. And what I'd like to do in this new series is to sketch them out, find the things that I love about them, and try to add a slight bit of my own taste to the designs in those areas that I think can maybe be changed, improved, modified in such a way that it's more to my liking. We're gonna have fun with this because I'm gonna do the sketching alongside, and I think what we should first do is have a good look around the car itself. I've been invited to E-Type UK, which is an absolute stunning place to come for any, not only E-Type fan, but any automotive enthusiast. Their showroom is incredible, and they've been very kind to invite me, to allow me to use their space here. That's why it looks absolutely stunning around me. So let's have a good look around the car and come back and see what we can sketch. How can an industrial object blend the line so well between art and science and elevate automotive design to a true art form? So much so that it can justifiably sit alongside the best works of Picasso and Warhol in New York's Museum of Modern Art? For me, it's obvious. Let me see if I can break it down a little bit design-wise. First of all, it's a sensational form. And like any iconic design, it's timeless. It just gets better with age. It has a natural appeal to it, an immense amount of sensuality to the design. And Malcolm Sayer, the designer, or rather the aerodynamicist who did the design, worked just with geometric forms. Geometric forms are related to organic forms. And I think if you can just stand back and start to appreciate some of those forms that he used, for example, along the fender line here, if you really get in there close and look at it, you'll notice it's just a tube. It's a cylindrical tube, almost a perfect tube. And it just continues on rearwards, very simple, very uncluttered, and it blends masterfully, I always say that word when it is masterfully, masterfully done, but it's done so well that it blends your vision line, continues alongside the door and blends into the most sensual hips ever designed on an automobile. You can look at the front and you can appreciate this long expansive bonnet and you have that power dome in the middle that adds that just little bit of element of sculpture to it. And that gives it a lot of interest in the front. The headlights, just like the eyes on a person, staring at you with a really nice look. Nothing aggressive, nothing sad, just an interested, very fixed look. And it's very, very pleasing to the eye. If you look at the mouth, the grill, the intake here, nothing complex, just a very simple elliptical shape, nothing complicated, and with probably an unneeded bar right through the middle of the grill with the emblem, with the Jaguar right in the middle, almost looks like a, a wild animal coming out of a dark cave. A little bit on the aggressive side, but not overly done. Just pure shapes right through the middle. As you walk around on the side here, you start to notice some elements that are normally not really appreciated, but you can see the connection between the bottom of the windscreen through this hard edge and it blends up into the hips through there. 
If that wasn't there, you'd lose the connection between the front and the back. But they've been able to apply it in a very discreet way, and it continues the vision line through the belt line. As you come through here, you can see how the central hips blend beautifully up into the tailgate. You get a nice wraparound chrome bumper. The treatment of the chrome on this car is exquisite. You come to the rear, one of the most simple rear ends on any car ever designed, just the right amount of elements and done in a very, very proportional way. The exhaust pipe on here, a true symbol of power and performance. As perfect a design on an automobile has ever been seen. But if I had a bit of input on this vehicle, there are a few things that I would have liked to have done to the vehicle. And let me try to explain what I mean by that. For example, the chrome surround here stops abruptly, whereas the rain gutter, as we call it, could have perhaps just blended carefully into the side molding here of the quarter glass. Perhaps lowering this line a little bit from the side view would have helped just to get the back end to crouch down a little bit more over the rear wheel. And another thing that I kind of miss is the chrome line as it surrounds the quarter glass and comes forward. I miss it from here to here. Now I feel that they purposely left it out for different reasons, but I really feel from a visual point of view that it would have enhanced it enormously if they would have connected that point to this point, the base of the windscreen, with a nice flowing line that would have finished off the framework around the window screen and the window perfectly. This joint, this blend here is quite hard and I would have loved to seen it a little bit softer, almost as if you would have taken your thumb, pressed it into whatever material they were using and just use that as a radius. At the moment, it's a bit too hard for my liking. Then again, as we move to the forward here, to the forward area of the clamshell hood, it's absolutely beautifully styled, very clean, just, just what I love. But there is one element on the front bonnet, the front hood, the clamshell as we call it, that I kind of feel like they should have gone the extra mile to, and that is the fitting between this panel and that panel. We know it as a clamshell. It's typically a hood or a bonnet that goes from one end of the car or from one wheel to the other wheel. But in this case, they can't press that amount of metal because of the angles. And what they've done is joined this part to this part with a seam line directly through here. And they cover it with this slight bit of chrome molding over the top of it to hide the joint. And for me, it would have been worth the effort, worth the cost to have filled that joint line, filed it off and finished it such that you would have a nice flowing surface through the top of the fender. I think that would have made it exquisite. Also on the top of the bonnet, we have the louvers for evacuating a bit of the engine heat. And for me, to my liking, they're a bit straight. I don't really see any straight lines on an E-type. And I would have much preferred that the lures would have had a little bit of curvature in them. That would have come in very nicely here had these louvers been slightly curved. A bit harder to produce, obviously, but it would have helped it design-wise. And then again, as we move forward to the headlight area, I think these deserve special mention because these headlights are absolutely stunning. Unmistakably Jaguar E-type. Yet, I would have modified these too, in the sense that if you look at the chrome surround, it's not a perfect shape. And I often believe that beauty is not perfect. It adds definitely character, but what I feel is that the shape is a little bit out of sync. In other words, it's not as pure as the rest of the car. It almost looks like a forced line. And typically when we cut shapes out of cylindrical objects, you try to do it on what we call a planar cut. And the planar cut would give you a line that is beautiful in every angle that you look at it. Here, the line wobbles, comes in, goes out, goes back in. And so it's dancing around the surface in a way, perhaps, that adds a little bit of confusion to the overall shape of the lamp. Another thing about the headlights that's always kind of disturbed me is that the inside, the inner housing of the headlamp, is actually a solid color. It's painted gray. And I feel that this item here should just glow, should just have a jewel-like, as we call it, appearance. And I think it would have helped quite a bit 
to have chromed the inner housing of the lamp here so that reflective surface below it would have just lit up and looked spectacular. Another item that I think would be interesting to play with is the indicator. To my liking, this is all a little bit cluttered. And I think that if we could have taken this indicator lamp here and integrated it into the chrome bumper, it would have helped immensely. It would have helped clean up the area here, integrating, again, the indicator directly into the bumper itself. In the pillar area, we call this the A pillar, and this is the B pillar. What I'm gonna try and do is to actually readjust these two lines because if you stand back and look at it, although they're parallel, they do look like they're widening up at the top and that gives you the appearance of instability. I think either we can try to pull this line again slightly back, angle it slightly back, or angle this one slightly more vertical. Then we'll have that, that beautiful set shape. Now that I've identified a few other things that we can play with, let's grab a pen and paper and see what we come up with. some great initial sketches to go off of and I want to thank E-Type UK for the amazing opportunity to come down here to their showroom to sketch the E-Type live and in the wild. Let's go back to the studio and render these out. Whoa! So, in the studio. Before I render out this iconic, impressive, magnificent E-Type, let me break it down a little bit and show you what I'm going to do uh, and, and first of all, remember that I haven't uh, rendered a car in three years. I've done planes, boats, products. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to take and lift the fenders. So we're going to give a bit more curvature, a bit more height to the fender in the area directly above the front wheel. We're gonna fix the headlights in the sense that we're gonna make them a little bit more geometric such that it's more in tune with the geometry of the surfaces of the vehicle itself. We're gonna pull the front end slightly forward, give it a bit more plan view. We're gonna make the air intake, which is a beautiful ellipse, a little bit smaller so we have more surface in the front of the car to play with. We're gonna reduce the bumper, overall size of the bumper. We're gonna narrow it slightly and we're gonna integrate the blinker, the turn indicator, into the bumper itself, so it's just a nice little slit. We're going to change the air vents on here, make them less square, and we're gonna eliminate the vertical line, the shut line on the bonnet, or on the clamshell, the rear one, and we're gonna integrate it into the door shut line so that we have a nice, clean surface on the side of the vehicle. We're gonna lower the glass, the top of the windscreen, and we're gonna kick that A-pillar back and we're also gonna widen the car slightly. A combination of all these things here should give it a new feel to it, not um, say of this day and age, but something that could have fit in well back in the early 60s and looked perhaps, perhaps slightly more uh, attention to detail. All this car is fabulous. Of course, it's my favorite car ever. Uh, the Series 1, of course, the fixed head coupe like this one here. Um, but I wanna to try to see if the little changes that we do can give it a little bit more of a finesse to it, a little bit more elegance, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more sleek. So bearing in mind that I haven't done a rendering of a car in three years, let's see how I get along.
there we have it. I think it uh, feels a little bit more Frank-like. I've done a few things on here that, uh, for me, please the eye. For example, the headlights now are much more of a pure form. They have a very consistent shape. They don't wiggle or dance all over the surface. They have a very, almost a very geometric shape like the rest of the car. And now what I've done is add a little bit of curvature to the front fenders to give them a bit more sweep. Lifted them slightly over the center of the front wheels. I've run the chrome bumper through the grill, slimmed it down so it wasn't so thick. Got rid of the overrider so it's much cleaner in the front. It still has the same function as before, serving as a bumper. I've tightened up the air intake, the ellipse, and made it a little bit smaller so it didn't occupy so much space on the front of the, uh, of the clamshell. Uh, that sort of gives you a little bit more surface area to play around with and to, and to really accentuate the, the shape of that beautiful bonnet towards the front. And I also pulled it forward to give the front of the car a little bit more plan view. That makes it a little bit more, more piercing. As I come to the back of the, uh, the bonnet, you can start to see what I've done with the air vents here. I've kicked them back, angled them slightly so they have again more plan view, a bit more piercing, like I said, for the front of the hood, carrying that back onto the vent so they don't run so parallel like they do today. I've closed up the wheel opening around the front wheel because at the moment it looks uh, a little bit more exaggerated than it needs to be. I think it can tighten up across or over the, the wheel itself, so it closes it up a little bit. Again, more surface area to play with there. What I've done here is uh, pretty major actually. I've kicked the A-pillars back, so the windscreen is a little bit more leaning back and giving you a bit more of an aerodynamic profile. It's not so upright as it was before. Again, that's by leaning the, uh, the A-pillars back slightly. And then I've given it a bit more curvature, a bit more roundness, in, again, in the plan view, so it has a bit more of a sweep that helps it to run into the side glass a little bit uh, more gentle than it does at the moment. Another big change that I've done is the bonnet will actually now look much longer than it even is uh, currently, simply by taking away the rear shut line, the rear cut line of the, of the clamshell bonnet, and integrating it into the front line of the door. So that cleans up the side to get rid of one line. And as you can see here, the line of the lower edge of the clamshell now runs consistently into the bottom line of the door. And instead of coming to a right angle as it does now, it kind of gently sweeps up and then closes off the door line. So you can see a nice flow to that line here now. I've also lowered the windscreen uh, a bit and that in turn lowers the the height of the cabin so it looks a little bit more sleeker and I've thinned out the chrome a little bit thinned out the a pillar a little bit kept the chrome because that's one of the important elements on the e type is that that exquisite use of chrome that they've got in certain areas what I've done to the headlights is add the chrome into the inner bezel here so that brightens the eye, which I think is really important also at the moment, it's a painted surface. I think by, by going with a chrome bezel, it really will lighten up the, uh, literally, and uh, no pun intended, lighten up the light. Then again, we move slowly back and you can see how I've gotten rid of that very sharp edge on the door panel, which is actually a, a very nice feature, but I just feel that if it was a little bit softer, not so hard edged, it would just help the eye to, to gently and, and smoothly run from the core of that cylindrical fender or side of the, uh, the wing here. And that would just let your eye sweep past gently into those, those luscious hips that it has in the back. Again, what I've done with the bottom line of the windscreen is to run it in to the baseline or the waistline of the glass, the side glass. So what I've actually done is tilt the waistline slightly downward so that it runs smoothly into the base of the windscreen, which you can see here. And I've kicked the B pillar slightly more forward and slightly inwards, not, not a lot, but enough to give it what we call tumble home, that leaning in of the glass, so that it looks a little bit less upright, a little bit less stiff. So that gentle leaning in of the tumble home of the glass helps to get you a, a cabin that looks a little bit more compressed a little bit more tight. 
that's about it. In the back, of course, what I wanted to do was what I've done here, which is take the clutteredness that I, I, I saw in this area just below the headlamp and the bumper to try to get that a little bit cleaner. And what I've done there is take out that side marker, the side indicator unit, uh, and integrate it into the bumper itself. So it's just a nice slit. Yeah, so I think I really like it now. I think uh, it would be a fabulous build to take on and actually produce something with these few minor tweaks. So thanks very much for watching this. Guys, let me know what you think. Uh, tell me if you think I did a good job or not. Don't worry about my feelings. I've got pretty thick skin, uh, and so it's not gonna hurt me. I'd just love to see what you guys feel about it. Thanks again, E-Type UK. It was a total eye-gasm to be able to feast my eyes on this uh, beautiful automobile. Uh, it's an amazing car. It's my favorite car ever and uh, it feels kind of uh, sacrilegious to actually do what I'm doing here in this car. It's, uh, you don't mess with the cross. You don't mess with certain things in life. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. Monte, look up here. Come here. Ready? Here we go. Ready? What I'm going to do now is ask for you to list down below what car would you put in your dream car garage. And what I'm going to do at the end is pick four random persons who have commented on that. And I'm going to send out some of the drawings I've done in preparation for this video and for the rendering that you see at the end. So, look forward to reading the comments and seeing some of your responses and I'll make sure that I get these in the email, in the mail.